All right, so now I'll talk about uh, under what conditions on Runge-Kutta method is it uh, symplectic, all right? So this is uh, symplectic Runge-Kutta methods. And it turns out that the condition for symplecticity uh, is expressed in terms of this uh, famous uh, M matrix, which we had before. Right, so the theorem is that, uh, okay, if this uh, famous M matrix is uh, identically zero, uh, then the Rokukuri method is symplectic. And, and what we'll see is that the proof technique is extremely similar uh, to the way we proved that uh, a Runge-Kutta method uh, with a famous M matrix, which is identically zero, uh, preserves all quadratic uh, invariants. Okay, um, so let's try to prove this directly now um, using sort of similar ideas. Okay, so, um, so you have a, um, of course you have a differential equation um, which says that uh, y prime is equal to j gradient of the Hamiltonian at y, right? Where j is this symplectic matrix, zero, identity minus identity, zero. Okay. Um, and then uh, you want to check the symplecticity condition. Uh, and you want to apply a Runge-Kutta method to that. Um, so I'm just going to express it in terms of the vector um, field evaluations at the internal stages, just because that turns out to be more convenient. Uh, so, uh, so you have C k is the vector field f evaluated at uh, Tn plus ckh, and then uh, normally write this as, I guess, a big Yn, but I'm going to write this explicitly in terms of the, uh, the vector field, okay? So a k l uh, cos c l. I'm summing over l here, and then uh, y n plus one is equal to y n plus h times the sum over k of b k cos c k. All right. So this is of course equivalent. It's like to uh, the way we normally write uh, Runge-Kutta methods. Okay, and we want to apply it. Okay, so we want to apply this to that differential equation. Um, and then we want to check that that map is, or conditions, it's like on the Runge-Kutta coefficient so that that map is symplectic. Okay, uh, so let's define a few things. So you let uh, psi n be the partial derivative of y n respect to y zero. Okay, uh, and then in that setting, uh, symplecticity is saying, sort of means that uh, the conjugation, well, psi n plus one transpose j psi n plus one, right, is equal to psi n j psi n. Okay, so that's basically what you would like to show. Okay, uh, and this is true, you want this to be true for n equals to zero, one, and so on. Okay, uh, so that's one thing we introduced, and we have to introduce a few more other things. Uh, so we want to look at the uh, sort of the linearization of the vector field, right? Okay, and then uh, we want to introduce this GK, which is this uh, Hessian of the Hamiltonian. Okay, at the internal stage points. Okay, then uh, to make the analysis simpler, we're going to assume that this uh, matrix is invertible. Right. And sort of to simplify the proof, assume that uh, 
GKs uh, are non-singular. Okay. All right. All right. So with that, then uh, you can write um, the um, linearization of the discrete map in the following way. Right. So the this linearization is the one at the previous time plus h times uh, this quadrature approximation bk sum over k of the linearization of the vector fields. Okay. All right. So by now it's like you know what the trick is, right? You take this expression, you substitute into the left-hand side, and then you start collecting terms, right? Let's see what happens. Okay, so, um, all right, so uh, psi transpose j uh, psi at the n plus one point is equal to, uh, let me just write down what this is, okay. Transpose j. Okay. All right. Uh, and then that has a bunch of terms, uh, which uh, one of which is uh, the one you want, and then the rest of it should vanish, right? This order h term, which has to do with the cross terms, right? Sum over k of b k transpose, and there's the this quadratic term in h. Sum over k, sum over l, uh, b k, b l, right? All right, and then by now it's like uh, you should expect that what we are gonna end up doing is that we're going to rewrite this uh, uh, linearization of the flow uh, in terms of, um, right, um, by using it's like the, these um, internal stage equations, it's like so that you end up getting it's like uh, terms which have this kind of, you know, form, right? Okay, all right, so let's see. Okay, so let's just raise this for now, and then let's see where we go. Um, all right, so you can, uh, of course, differentiate the Runge-Kutta method. Uh, and then it's like apply the fact that you have uh, the special form of the equation, right? Which is that, uh, um, or should I say it? Well, f of uh, ty, right, is equal to j gradient h uh, y t, right? So using that fact, um, okay, uh, and then um, you differentiate. It's like the method to give you this condition. here. All right, uh, and then you want to uh, solve for this uh, psi term, okay? So you want to take this equation, you want to solve for psi, right? Which is sort of what we've always done. So psi n is equal to um, g k inverse. Right, so this comes to j inverse now. Sum over L, A, K, L. All right. Okay. 
So, so we're going to look at this term and then try to expand that. Okay. So, um, sum over BK. So let's see where we're saying, right? So this is equal to um, sum over k of bk. Okay, and then you substitute this expression here. two terms, sum over k of b, k, sorry, there's a k here. Minus h, uh, sum over k, sum over l of B K A K L and then this quadratic like term here. All right. Uh, and then you can do the same thing with Yeah, there are two terms here, right? There's another term which looks like H, K, B, K. All right, yeah, so there are two terms um, which uh, are similar, but they're not the same. Okay. All right, so, so we have a sum over, this is a sum over k, you can think of this as sum over L of uh, B, L, then this is going to be equal to um, So it's going to be the sum over L of BL. And then uh, you substitute this expression here again, right? So that's, um, I have to transpose it. Okay, so that's this L transpose. Uh, J negative transpose uh, G. Okay, so here I'm using the fact that G is symmetric, right? Minus H uh, sum 
over k a l k all right um, so um, here I'm going to use the fact that uh, j is skew symmetric um, and get rid of the transpose and put a negative sign so there's a minus sum over l b l All right, where was I? Mm. Okay, minus h sum over k sum over l, b l a l k, and then sort of these mixed terms. All right, um, and then uh, you use the fact that uh, j transpose is minus, yeah, so you use the fact j transpose is minus j. Um, all right, um, in any case, it's like, um, and then using other properties of J, it's like you can show that this term um, is going to cancel out this term here. All right, and so what happens then is that um, if you take um, the conjugation, if you will, it's like of the J matrix by the linearization at the n plus first stage, right? That's equal to the conjugation by the linearization at the nth stage, right? Plus uh, a bunch of terms. Okay, um, oops, sorry, not done yet, right? Plus so these terms will cancel, right? These are the terms which you don't quite know how to deal with. Those will cancel out. And then you're just left with uh, all these other terms. <coughs> okay, which look like, um, okay, so minus h squared. Um, h squared um, sum over k sum over l <coughs> okay um, b k a k l plus b l a l k minus b k b l which of course are the uh, entries of the famous matrix right times this term, uh, and so that's equal to this minus h squared sum over k sum over l, m, k, l, and then these terms. Okay, so uh, it's uh, clear that this is equal to this as long as mkl vanishes, right? So uh, so if m equals to zero, mkl equals to zero, right? Which implies that uh, this condition holds. Which implies simplicity, right? All right. 
so the proof strategy, if you will, is quite similar to uh, what we saw. It's like with uh, the proof that um, if your famous matrix M is zero, that uh, your Runge-Kuda method preserves quadratic invariance. So uh, conceptually, it's like the approach is quite similar. Uh, and again, it's like, uh, as is often the case, you have to use the fact that uh, the vector field you have has a particular form, right? So in this case, you use this form of the vector field. Um, yeah, so, so that proves it's like uh, the thing which we need to show, right? All right, that's great.